you are in trouble, situations come, what are you doing? You got to pray. Find time to pray. Spend time in prayer daily. Father, this situation, you are reminding the Lord. You are standing on his word. You are praying. You are fasting. You are doing the you know, at midnight. You're praying. Early out of the morning, you're praying. What are you doing? You are, com- you are presenting that matter before the Lord. Why? Because that is the kingdom way. We want to go into the word now, and um, the what we're going to be looking at today uh, is uh, a topic, you know, called persistence in faith. Persistence in what in faith? Persistence in faith. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. Now I'll, I'll tell you why it is called persistence in faith. You know, uh, as we go along, persistence in faith. Very important, no topic. Now we live in a microwave world. A microwave culture whereby um, you want things you know done quickly you know we have you know very ready meal uh, ready meals everything is just quick 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 can be done you know, very very quickly um, and you and that book you have it available and you eat <laughs> yeah you know so and um, so we want you know things you know done just at you know at at the stop of a finger, basically. We ask questions, we want answers immediately. That's that's what we, we expect, you see. And um, but in God's kingdom, things work you know, differently. Yes, things work you know, somewhat differently, and that is one of the things that you know uh, Jesus you know, began to was was teaching and was uh, using a parable to illustrate now. Uh, Jesus you know, uses uh, used parables to uh, explain and illustrate kingdom mysteries. Now, this is a kingdom mystery that we're talking about here. Please don't remember that you know, for the last you know, four weeks we've been looking at you know, the gospel of God's kingdom. Now, this is another part of it as well. Okay, but although we have just titled it, you know, persistence in what in faith. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. So, um, so let us look at the book of you know, Luke, chapter eleven. Luke chapter 11, I'll read from verse 5. Luke chapter 11, I'll read from verse 5 to 10. It says, And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me. In bed, I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be what opened. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. Now, here we there are certain things here we need to look at. I want to bring your attention to, okay, yeah, in the parable that Jesus gave, just from verse five to verse uh, verse eight. Three, you know, five things there. I want to, you know, five or six you know, things I want to uh, point out. Um, from this you know, uh, scripture, which I believe will be uh, will be helpful to to you and to myself as well, to us all, praise the Lord. Number one, is this okay? It says, "He said to them, which of you shall have a friend, a friend?'" So let me use the word. Let me bring the word "friend" there. Friend, okay, yeah. Now, uh, so in other words, that means there was a relationship, okay? A relationship, you know, was there's a relationship between this person and the person that he was banging at his door so he wasn't just you not know, going to a complete total stranger you know house asking for um for something he was he had a relationship with this person who was his friend okay so that's number one and number two is that you know um um he he went 
he 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 went okay all right he made an attempt he did he didn't just stay at home he went to his friends he went he he had a need so he went somewhere he he he, he made that effort to go okay he made an effort to go uh as a result of the need he had okay all right so that's number two so here we're talking about approaching god in prayer so first of all the one of you know friendship is about relationship there, there must be a relationship you know with god okay now uh, i'm just using that now okay uh, and i'll 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 explain further uh so then it, that's the second one so he went that means there was an attempt he made he made an effort okay to try to um uh to seek help for the situation, the condition in which he was faced in. All right, yeah? He didn't just stay at home and expecting a miracle of like manna to drop down from heaven or something. Okay. So um, then um, the third, the third aspect again, I want to point out is that the case uh, there was um, is a case of uh, midnight. Uh, it says, you "No, know, that." Um, who and go to him, go to him at midnight at midnight okay so now the midnight hour uh um is is could be meta it could be metaphor is the aura like is it's a metaphor in many places for uh a challenging time okay yeah uh, the bible says you no know, that you know um sorrow may, may last for the night but joy comes what in the morning yeah so midnight would be could be defined or could be looked at as a very, very challenging time, very, very difficult time in a person's life. Uh, you know, when there is so much um, problems and difficulties one is faced with, or any of such. So, and that's a very, very challenging time. And this was at such a time that this person went to see uh, this, this his friend. So that's another one again. All right, yeah. Now um, the, the the fourth aspect was that you no, know, he needed food. Okay, he needed food. What prompted him to go was for because of food. He needed just three loaves of bread. Okay, so he needed something that was really very very important. He didn't just say, "Hey, listen, um, I needed um, some flimsy uh, flimsy excuse to go to." No, there was there was a need. Okay, there was a need. So he was quite desperate and he needed this particular thing, so which is food, hunger. Also, but he had it was for the friend who came from out of town. Uh, so that's uh, number four. I said so. The food was needed. In other words, he, which represents a great need. Uh, number five is that uh, uh, the door. His friend said, "You know that the door is shut." He said, "Do not trouble me." Verse seven said, "Do not trouble me." The door is now shut. The door is now what is now shut. Okay, and my children are with me in bed. So. Again, that represents you know, that you've been trying and making some efforts as well, making some efforts, and you just all you're keeping, all you keep hitting is like a brick wall. You keep hitting a brick wall, keep hitting a brick wall. No, no progress at all. You're not making any progress, you know, uh, because the doors are slammed shut against you and against, against, uh, yeah, against that person. Now, the the last um, aspect I want to point out and I want to bring out is that verse 8 says, I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence. Now the king then says because of his importunity, because of his because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So persistence. Okay, persistence is the last word I want to give here. Uh, last thoughts on this persistence persistence now what is persistence i'll just give you a definition of what it says to continue steadfastly persistence means to continue steadfastly or i mean steadfastly firm or firmly in some state purpose or cause to continue steadfastly firmly in some state or cause of action especially in spite of opposition i'll stop there. especially in spite of what opposition persistence to continue uh, steadfastly or firmly in some state or purpose or course of action or the like especially in spite of what of opposition remonstrance it's also you know um to last or endure what 
tenaciously, to last or to endure what tenaciously persistence. Now, Jesus said in the book of, in that same Luke chapter 9, verse, verse 9, Luke chapter 11, pardon me, verse 9, he says there, he says, um, so I say to you, so I say to you, ask, so I say to you, so what is he saying now? He's saying from this illustration, from this parable, I am saying to you, ask. Now, other translations will say, the Living translation, the Amplified version, Amplified uh, 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 translation says, no, ask, keep on what asking. Ask, keep on what asking, and you will do what, and you will receive. Seek, keep on seeking, and you will find. Knock, keep on knocking, and the and it will be open unto you. So this is the kingdom way. Jesus was encouraging and admonishing us, saying, "Don't be discouraged." Now a lot of people easily get discouraged, and that's the thing. But Jesus is giving, gave the example of this friend who came at midnight. Now, so when you are asking God, so you are coming to God in prayer, okay? You are asking. So now the word ask then means you are asking in what? In prayer. Now, before you can ask God in prayer, you know, Jesus said in, in the earlier uh, uh, verse of this chapter 11, he talks about, he says, now it came to pass as he, verse 1 of chapter 11, he says, I came to pass as, as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So our Father means there's what? A relationship. A relationship must be established, first of all, before you can ask for anything. So that relationship must be there. Now, so you know, so, and you are, I mean, you don't, you and I don't see God. Okay, but we know that he is there. So you are coming to him in faith. You're coming to him by faith in his word. You sing to him, our father. So that relationship is there first of all. Now, you are challenged and you are coming at the midnight of your life. It could be at any you know, particular time. You need something desperately. You know, my wife and I were talking about, we were sharing this, uh, having this as a devotion this morning, and we just you know, discussed about it. There were certain things in 2021 uh, that we were uh, we, we were working together, you know, uh, believing God for, and we we set out to, to do stuff. We prayed about it. We you know just really believed God, and we we set out on it, but we didn't happen the way we planned it. But God then gave you know me another strategy for what we really wanted to achieve so which we then went ahead and we did it and praise god it happened now the prayer was answered but the wisdom or the way to go about that particular thing was not was lacking so that we made the first attempt it didn't work we made the second attempt you know did it you no know, properly then it then praise god it didn't work it, it worked praise the lord hallelujah now so here you are talking about, you know, that first of all, you are praying about something. You keep on praying and you are asking, you are praying, you are praying. You're not giving up at all. You're not saying, oh, well, you know, and this is the thing. A lot of people, a lot of people just be, get discouraged. <laughs> you get discouraged. And so this is what we're talking about, what persistence and what in faith, because you, you need to stand on the authority of God's word or else you lose. You, you're not going to get the things no, because it is a fight of faith, my friend. Persistence in faith is what enables you to have your desired results. So, number one, you are asking. You don't stop asking. You are asking who? Who are you asking? You are asking your Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, God, our Heavenly Father, through His Son, Jesus Christ, for those particular things. Now, again, you, that, there must be a relationship here. And that is why this friend, you know, Jesus in, that, in, in, in the uh, parable, He didn't say He went to a total stranger. No. And, and, and you cannot come to God in prayer if you are still in sin. Because you can, it's not going to hear you. You know what I mean? It's not going to hear you. All right, yeah? Now, the only prayer that God hears is that of you know, a sinner asking God for mercy to repent. Now, so here we have it you know, that you know, he was not praying. This person, so you and I are asking who our Heavenly Father we're asking him for something. Now it's got to be in accordance. It must be. It must be in a, you know according to his will, according to his will. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. 
Now that is key. It is, must be in, it must be according to His will. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, for us. Now, like I said, you know, when my wife and I we planned, we you know we, we were working on this particular you know project, and it didn't happen. You know, um, yes, initially we were not very, we weren't very, very happy about it, and it really, uh, uh, well, not. Uh, we just said, hey, listen, all right, <laughs> uh, maybe God doesn't have, maybe it's God, God, uh, and what came to me was that God has a better plan. That's the, that's the thing. God has what a better plan for us, and indeed, God had a better plan. And you know, looking back, we see that yes, God, it was a better plan you had for us. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. So, but we didn't stop asking. And we kept on asking, we kept on believing, we knew by faith that it was going to happen, and it happened in Jesus' mighty name. This is why you need to have Christ in you. You need to have the Word of God in you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, it says to keep seeking. Seeking, it says seek, and you keep on keep seeking. What does it mean? You're studying the Scriptures. You're searching. You're looking for the answers. Where are you looking for the answers? You're looking for the answers in the Word of God. You go outside of this Word, you might you might be faced with challenges and problems. Now, I'm not saying that you mustn't. Yeah, so those things God will direct you. Like you know, in the case of my wife and I, at the time I, I was I was I was talking to somebody, and the person just gave an idea. The person just told me something, and that was it. I said, "Wow, this is the way we should have done it. This is the way we should do it." It's just by that. So God, by His wisdom. Just gave me an idea. I mean, I was talking to somebody, and then that, that you know, the person had the information. Not that I went to, he had the information. We're just talking, just you know, just a, you know, just a uh, conversation we're having, and that was where, and that was the answer I needed. Boom, I went on it. So I'm seeking. You are seeking. You are seeking first of all from the Scripture. You are standing on the Word of God, and then you know you are believing God and the Lord Himself. Yeah, you, you can seek for information as well. Uh, uh, information that is needful for what you want to achieve. Information. Yeah, you seek. You keep searching. You keep searching. You keep searching. You keep seeking. And you will do what you will find in Jesus' mighty name. And then knocking. 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 What does it mean? It says knock and keep on what Keep on knocking. Knocking means you, know, you are taking steps of faith. You are taking steps of faith, you know. Yes, no, this particular door may have been shut against you. Somebody has said no to you. This organization has said no to you. This one is threatening you or whatever it is and said no. But you are not giving up at all. You're not saying, okay, right, okay, I just, you know, give up, you know, uh, um, you know, throw in the towel and that's it. No. You are what? You are focused. You are persistent. You are not giving up. Don't forget, you know, what persistence is about is what it is to continue steadfastly or firmly in some state, purpose or course of action, especially in spite of what of opposition. It is to last or to endure tenaciously, tenaciously, praise the Lord, hallelujah. So these are the things you must understand. You have to have that persistence in faith. And this is why I say it's in faith, because it has to be rooted on what? On what? On the word of God. It could be anything at all. You have been given a you know um, a diagnosis that no other listen that there's no cure. There is a second opinion, my friend, and that is from the Word of God. The Bible says that for we walk by faith and not by and not and not by sight. So you are so you know they've given you some um, bad report or whatever it is. No, the Bible says, whose report shall what shall we believe? We believe the report of the Lord. Praise God, Hallelujah! We stand on the authority of God's word. Amen. We stand. Listen, this word of God will stand and has stood the test of time. And your faith and my faith in this God through His word will give you an eye. That persistence in faith gives you an eye. The victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. So this is a mystery that Jesus was trying to explain to us. That in the kingdom, it's about what? It's about persistence. It's about what? Persistence. You do not give up at all. It's about what? Persistence. And you carry on with it until the results come. Now, why? Why would us, why would God uh, be, you know, require us to, you know, to be sort of waiting and, and all the rest and, just taking time. <laughs> As some persons you know, said one time that, man, you know, God takes his time, you know. 
But if you go to uh, Satan's kingdom, it's just not quickly. But at the expense of your soul, at the expense of your soul. All right. Now, let's very quickly look at an ex another example here. Let's look at the book of, you know, Proverbs, uh, sorry, uh, Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Um, Luke chapter 18, I'll read from verse 1. Then he, spoke, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose hearts. Now, this is a parable he gave. Why, why did he give that parable? That men, that you and I, should always, what ought always to what to pray. We should always what pray and not give up, not lose heart, not be discouraged. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. No matter what, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, it says, No, that I have was young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. You must understand that God has a, uh, a, a plan for you and I. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 20, it says, For we know that all things work together for, for good. Now, listen, to them, you must call it, to them that love God and are called and are called according to his purpose do you love jesus do you love god uh -huh. if you are faced with whatever whatever challenges you are facing loving god means you are obeying his word praise the lord hallelujah and as a result you love god you love the lord so you are what the, the whatever situation is taking whatever is happening no matter what it, it will work together for your good in the mighty name of jesus christ I can guarantee you 110%. Praise God, hallelujah. So long, as long as you remain steadfast, rooted, you keep your eyes on the word. You keep your eyes on who? On Jesus Christ. Because this is, that is the plan of the enemy. Okay, let me, let me just quickly read up before, because uh, well, I'm just conscious of time right now. It says, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to do what to pray and not lose heart prayer. Uh, prayer. What are you? You are in trouble. Situations come. What are you doing? You gotta pray. Find time to pray. Spend time in prayer daily. Father, this situation. You are reminding the Lord. You are standing on His word. You are praying. You are fasting. You are doing the you know, at midnight. You're praying early out of the morning. You're praying. What are you doing? You are come. You are presenting that matter before the Lord. Why? Because that is the kingdom way. Now, look at it here. It says, saying, there was in a city, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God, nor regard man. Now, there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man. Yet, because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect, who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them, though he bears long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, Will he really find faith on the earth? Though he bears long with us. <laughs> and shall, verse 7 says, And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night? Are you crying out to God day and night concerning that situation? Or have you just become discouraged and said, Right, okay, you know, may, 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 God doesn't want to hear my prayer, God is not hearing my That is the lie of the devil. And many people have been, you know, denied, many people have had their, their uh, have had their, um, their blessings uh, uh, stolen from them by the devil because he's oh uh, God doesn't you know you know God doesn't want uh, some some say oh maybe God doesn't want this for me or so whatever it is no you just stay there and keep on what keep praying yes it might be that God has something far better for you yes he has something far better but still be praying don't give up on that still continue praying now look at it it says and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them. So we don't so we don't serve a Father Christmas God, we do not serve a microwave open God. He bears long, he's long suffering. Why? Because he's trying to build what faith in us. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. It says, I tell you that he will avenge them more speedily. 
at the particular time. He would have you on high speed, and nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? God is building what faith in you and I, persistence in faith. God, the Lord is building faith in you and I. He wants us to be built up. He wants our faith to be built up. He wants what our faith to be what, to be built up in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of, uh, I, I believe it's Romans chapter 1 or so. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so the persistence in faith. Yeah. Romans chapter 1, I read from verse 16, it says, For I am not ashamed, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it says, For I am, not, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Now look at verse 17, it says, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. It is from faith to faith, one level of faith to the other. And the way you and I grow, the way you and I are promoted in the kingdom is through challenges and problems and difficulties. They will come. You can never see a military person who has been promoted to the rank of a major or to a general if he or she has not been to war. So they battles to fight men. But your persistence in the word of God your persistence in faith in God's word, not giving up at all, not throwing in the towel, not saying, oh, I can't handle this anymore. Yes, you can't handle it. That is why you need the help of God. The Bible says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, say to say the Lord of all, you stay in there. Praise God. Hallelujah. You don't give, you, no, you tell the devil, listen, no, you do your worst. Do what do your worst, but I will surely have my victory in Jesus' mighty name. I am victorious over you. I am victorious in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, persistence in faith is what we're talking about here. That you must understand that no, the Lord is with you and I. The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Why? Because the devil does not want, he is afflicting you so that you give up. He wants you to do what? Give up. Just forget about this. Just relax. Don't trouble yourself. No, just give it up. I've had many of such experiences in my own time, in my life, and I'm still having them. But we don't do what? You don't give in. No. Why? Because greater is he that is in us than he, than the, than the devil and his evil agents that are out there doing whatever they say they are doing in Jesus' mighty name. So, please understand this, that in the parable that Jesus gave in Luke chapter 18, it says that men ought always to pray and not to do what and not to faint. Don't give up. My friend, um, no matter what, <laughs> you know, I've, one of the things I've always asked, I've always said to myself is, is, what is the worst that can happen? What is the worst that can, what, that can happen? What is the, you must come to that point. What is the worst that can happen? Praise God, hallelujah. No. So you stand on the authority, but because you are standing on the authority of God's word, nothing, no evil will come near you. It will not come. It will not happen. The Lord, your God, the Lord, our God, will def He defends you and I. He defends us in the mighty Lord. He fights for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand persistence and faith. And I remember, you know, just this morning as I was also studying the scriptures, I just, you know, went back, you know, to, you see, the scripture the Lord, you know, gave to me when he sent me on this assignment. Gave me, you know, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. It says that for whatsoever is born of God, whatsoever, Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. I think I need to use the King James Version, which I prefer. It says that for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Your faith, my faith, and your faith will be tested. It will be what? It will be, conf it must be tested and then it must be then confirmed. It's not fair, not a fair weather kind of, you know, uh, faith. No, it, listen, you are there, come rain, come shine. The storms will hit, but because we are standing, 
you know, resolute on God's word. No, come on, we will not, we will, no, we will not bow. We we're definitely going to win. So it is your persistence in what in faith. This woman was coming daily. So in the same way, you and I, we are to keep on coming to our Heavenly Father. He's not tired. He's not weary. He's not tired of hearing us. But we are asking in faith. We are standing on the authority of His word because we know, hey, Father, you hear me. The Bible says in the book of you know, um, Psalm chapter 65, uh, very, very quickly, uh, go there. It says in verse 2, it says, All you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. I, I Please forgive me for those of you who are not very much used to the kingdom. The Bible is in the kingdom, but it says, no, All thou that hearest prayers, unto thee shall all flesh will come. He is the one that hears prayers. So your prayers is, is, is you saying to our Heavenly Father, saying to your Heavenly Father, my Heavenly Father, Father, I need your help. I cannot do this on my own. I need you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I need your help. So you are no longer depending on yourself, on your resources, on your contacts, on your power, on your strength, on your abilities. No, you are depending on who? On the Lord, our God. And what will he do? He will surely show up and he will surely make himself known on your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Okay, uh, if we go to the book of Isaiah chapter 62, Isaiah chapter 62, uh, read from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 62, reading verse 6, it says, uh, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. They shall never do what? They shall never hold their peace, what? Day or night. They shall never be silent, no. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent mm -hmm. and give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. You see, this is the reason why you need to be born again. <laughs> Being born again means that you know, your spirit man is now tuned to the Lord. Your spirit man, this is the food your spirit man now you know, eats. This is what strengthens your spirit man because the battle is in your mind. You see, all those things, those, the thoughts are coming to your mind. They, they're coming to your mind. They're coming to your mind. So if you are not spirit led, you are not filled with the spirit of God, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit and you are not, you are not born again, you can't, you can't handle the, the pressure. The pressure comes. The pressure will always come. My friend, but you need you need your spirit man robust, your robust spirit man, and you your your spirit man is robust through what by being born again, and through what through prayer. That is how you are then what because you are because everything around you everything around you is telling you listen you can't make it forget it give it up you are finished already. It's like a cartoon. It's like a cartoon, you know, drawing. You know, you see like a, uh, a seagull uh, swallow the. Um, <laughs> it's a very funny uh, um, sort of you know, cartoon character or, or painting or, or picture. A seagull swallow the uh, um, uh, a frog, but the frog, you know, uh, has his hands out and grabs the seagull by the neck. <laughs> That's no uh, thing. no. You may have swallowed me, but no, 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 I'm not going to let you swallow. I mean, you may have put me in your mouth, but, you know, he held the seagull, you know, at the throat, so you can't swallow me. You can't, you know, it's, it's not going to go down. No, you can't. So you stand on the authority of God's word, knowing fully well that your heavenly father, my heavenly father, the one whose kingdom rules over our world. And I want to bring that up right now, that God's kingdom rules over our world. This word of God, you know, has stood the test of time. Come, whatever, whether recession or sickness, no, they are, listen, there are many, many people who have had testimony, and you too will have your own testimony to the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
A testimony is what is a test that you have had, the person has had a test, and you have come out of that test. The Lord has brought you out of that test to the glory of his name. And you are testifying that you know, the Satan and his works and whatever it is that has been done has been what has been put that has been defeated. And Jesus has been lifted high. God the Father has been glorified because he brought deliverance for you and I in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, my friend, persistence in faith. No matter the situation that you are faced with, persistence in what? In faith. Don't heed to whatever it is that has been said. Oh, the economy is this. Oh, there is no inflation. There is no job losses. No, whatever it is. Yes, minus me. Minus me because I am born of God. Because God's kingdom rules. God's kingdom rules. This is a kingdom principle and God's kingdom rules. It says, you know, that, you know, shall God not avenge, God will avenge me, his own elect. I cry out, you and I, we cry out what day and night, you know, to him. Though he is bearing long with all, the Bible says, you no, know, be followers of them. Hebrews chapter 11 verse, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse, be what followers of them who, what, who through faith and patience inherit what the promises. Not being slothful. I think that's the book of uh, Romans to there about. It says, no, not being slothful, but being what? Being followers of them who what? True patience. Who through faith and patience what inherit the promise. What is that? It is what? Persistence. Abraham was persistent regarding what it is that the Lord has spoken concerning. Even when there was nothing, nothing was contrary. Everything around him was what? Was saying the opposite. Yet he was persistent. Praise God. So we are to emulate, we are to follow such persons and see, we'll see, um, you know, God's uh, hand upon us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, um, so I just want to say, you know, in, in closing right now, I want you to know that, you know, God has great plans, you know, for you and I. But it comes with you believing his word, standing on the authority of his word not being tossed, you know, to and fro by every wind of doctrine, not being tossed by the situation around. No. This is why you need to be feeding yourself. You, know, I don't know. you need to feed yourself with what? With the word of God, with messages such as this. You know, there are those, you know, on social media, they flick, 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 flick. You know, how do you, how do you, how do you build up your spirit man? How do you build up your spirit man? It is by you, you, you spend the time meditating, getting the juice of, and you are be, you know, listening to messages such as this where you be built up. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So, I want to encourage you right now if you have not, if you are facing whatever it is, listen, yeah, hey, hey, welcome to the club, but stay there, all right? Don't give up if you feel that no, you are losing your grip, you're losing your balance and whatever it is and you're giving up, hey, listen, I'm here to tell you, don't do that. Stay there. Believe God. Stand, keep doing it. Keep, if you, maybe you do, do something else, but believe God to open up those doors. Believe God. Stand on the authority of God's word. And if you are not you know, in, yeah, in line with Christ, with God's word, come on, I want to pray for you right now. You need to be born again. You need to have your sins you know, forgiven. You need to be reconciled you know, to your Heavenly Father. He wants to help you out of that situation. Whatever it may be, don't allow the devil to take the glory. No, God, your Heavenly Father, will take the glory if you repent and you, you know, uh, stay connected to Him, hooked up you know, to Him. I'm going to pray this prayer right now, and I want you to repeat this prayer after me. If you want Jesus Christ into your, to, you, to come into your life, to be, to, to be your victor, to help you in this you know, battle that you are faced with. Come on, just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear God, yes, dear God, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I have sinned against you and I have fallen short of your glory. I have come short of your glorious standards. I have broken your laws and I'm truly sorry for all my sins. And I ask you to please forgive me Wash me clean of all my sins with the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Now I know that I have done them all in ignorance. Ignorance of your ways and ignorance of your word. And I ask you once again to please forgive me and wash me clean with the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ, your only begotten son, 
came into this world over 2,000 years ago, died on the cross for me to save me from my sinful nature and from sin. On the third day, you raised him from the dead, that I may be justified as though I never committed any sins. Therefore, I willingly receive you, Jesus Christ, into my heart to be my Savior from my sinful nature and from sin, and to be the Lord of my life, to be the master of my life, to be the one whom I now live for, to be the one whom I now follow. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I receive your Holy Spirit to live a victorious and a successful Christian life, loving you, Jesus Christ, living for you, Jesus Christ, and serving you, Jesus Christ, all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for answering my prayers. In Jesus Christ's precious name I have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. All right, I'm just going to pray for you right now. Father, I want to thank you for these ones, Lord. The Bible says that with a heart one believes unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. I just pray, Father, for these ones right now. I pray, Lord, thank you for drawing them to yourself. Thank you, Father, for choosing them, even from the foundation of the world. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would baptize them right now with your Holy Spirit and with your fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, baptize them now with your Holy Spirit and with your fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, Lord, that they will be rooted and grounded in you, in Christ Jesus, our Savior, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, Father, that, O oh Lord, the fire of your love, the fire of your love, O oh Lord, will keep burning in their heart, O oh Lord, to keep loving you and to love you is to obey you and to keep your commandments in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I pray, Father, for their families. Lord, because of these ones, all the members of their families are saved. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks, O Lord. We say, blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Bless them. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. Okay, I'm just going to pray for you. We have just, a, uh, just about three or four minutes left now. Listen, whatever that situation may be right now, come on, let us present it before the Lord. Whatever that situation may be that you are faced with, now, let us now, at, in, under this atmosphere right now of faith, let us right now present it before our Heavenly Father. Let us believe God for a miracle for you right now. Father, I come in agreement, O Lord, with my brother or my sister, O Lord, and I declare and I decree, O Lord, Father, whatever storms, whatever, O Lord, challenges, O Lord, Father, difficulties, problems, that, uh, 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 trials, O oh Lord, that this person, O oh Lord, is faced with right now, whatever it may be. Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, that, Lord, you would come through for each one of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray, O oh Lord, that their faith, O oh Lord, be strengthened, that they be strengthened in faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, Father, that they will keep, O oh Lord, uh, following you, standing on the authority of your word, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that they will be strengthened with might by your precious Holy Spirit in their inner man to withstand, O oh Lord, and to overcome, Lord, this current, O oh Lord, situation that they may be faced with in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, where there is sickness and disease and affliction of the devil, I decree and I de and I command that affliction caused by that demo, that you, you unclean spirit, I command you, or I arrest you, I bind you, and I cast you out of the lives of this one right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demonic activities, oh Lord, causing afflictions, causing, oh Lord, challenges, or whatever it is, in the life of this person, right now, I bind you, and I arrest you, and I destroy your works against the life of this one by the blood of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we overcome. The Bible says that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. We overcome right now by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the words of our testimony, O Lord, that we have been, that you have given us victory over this, O Lord, challenges and these difficulties and whatever problems they are in the mighty name of, for your name in order to be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we give you thanks. And we say, blessed, blessed, blessed be your name. Thank you, Father, for answer to this prayer, so Lord. For it is in Jesus Christ's holy and precious name that we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise, 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 Master Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, I trust that you have all been blessed by that, you know, uh, uh, mess, by the message, uh, persistence in faith. And I thank God, you know, for you. For those of you who have 
uh, committed your life to Christ or giving your life to Christ in the course of this uh, uh, service, uh, I just want you to know that you know, that's the greatest decision you've ever made. And uh, may, I say, may I say to you, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. You are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, there are four things that you know I would recommend, that we recommend that you start to do now that you have received Christ as your Savior and Lord. One is that you start to uh, attend a Bible-believing, teaching and preaching church. It must be a church that honors God the Father, that glorifies Jesus Christ, and that also um, uh, reverences uh, and uh, reverences the person uh, of the Holy Spirit. And they also emphasize on the baptism with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues as well. Praise God, hallelujah. Uh, number two, you also need to start to read the Bible, study the Bible every day. Please spend time. This is where it is. This is the anchor for your soul and my soul. Spend time in the Word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Studying the Word, reading the Word you know, daily. Uh, yeah, so that would help you a great deal. Okay, please. Uh, to uh, to know Christ the more, to, so that you can, because the Bible says no faith. Uh, uh, the Bible says no faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So it is you hearing, meditating, you know, the Lord speaking to you through His Word. That is how you build your faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thirdly, you must have an active prayer life as well. You can't do it without, you know, an active prayer life. Uh, if you remember that place where we read in that um, in Luke chapter 18, it talks about uh, Jesus said you know, that, um, uh, you know, who cry out, you know, day and night, uh, says, you know, praying day and night. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'll very quickly just uh, bring it up now. Luke chapter 18. Praise God, hallelujah. It says, And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him? Okay, so crying out day and night is prayer. You must have an active prayer life, my friend. You can't make it without an active prayer life. So please make sure that you are committed to God through prayer. You are connected to him through prayer. It strengthens your faith, it strengthens your relationship, our relationship with our Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ. And fourthly, you start to tell people about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, what Jesus has done in your life, start to tell people about him, start to talk about him and tell people, excuse me, and I know that the Lord will do greater things and bring people to him through you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please know that, you know, I'm sure that some of you must have seen some of our um, uh, such, uh, flyers, uh, e-flyers on our social media platforms. So we have another event coming up in Colchester. And uh, we would really, really love for you to be part of it as well. So please, uh, there are more information. I'll be talking about it more as well uh, as we go along as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. So please understand here that you know, God desires your victory. He wants you to be victorious. Now, I'll leave you with this scripture. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. It says, now, what, shall, what then shall we say concerning this? If God be for you and I, who is it that can be against you? Romans chapter 8, verse 29 says, For whom, pardon me, um, verse 31, pardon me, verse 31, it says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? God is for you. No one can be against you in Jesus' mighty name. I declare the word of the Lord over you right now. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. Lift his kindness upon you and give you and all that concerns you peace and peace and peace on all sides. In the name of Jesus Christ, the peace of God surrounds you and your family as you remain rooted and grounded in the world also in Jesus' mighty name. All right, Lord, the Lord bless you. So thank you for being a part of the service tonight. I uh, look forward to seeing you again uh, by the special grace of God next week, uh, Wednesday. We will meet again for our Bible study. Please endeavor to be out tomorrow, okay, for evangelism. Tell people about Jesus. Go out on the streets. That's what Jesus wants us to do. Let's go out and tell people about Jesus Christ. And make sure that you're in church on Sunday. Uh, where we fellowship, you know, uh, the Lordship of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, with His people in the church. All right. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend and see you soon. Gospel Ministries every Wednesdays for Bible study 
and Fridays for Revival Service on Facebook, Instagram or YouTube via the link showing on the screen. Follow us on all our social media pages for daily inspiration from the Word of God.